So if you know me, and you know, you know, when I talk about the edge guys, the defensive end, I want to see how they take on the pullers. This is our guy, David Ojabu. I hope I'm not butchering his name. This is our guy right here. And let's see how he takes on the puller on this play right here. And again, this is versus Georgia. I'm going to try to do a player's best game and their best competition. That's what I'm going to attempt to do this year. All right, so here's the puller, 50. Puller's right here. This is the guy that we, I think Ujobu should attack. Because now at this point, I think he sees him coming. So don't wait. Don't wait here. Close this space. Close this space and attack this guy right here. And again, if we notice from the last game, he's not going to spill this. So he's not going to wrong shoulder and throw that shoulder and that make it bounce. He's going to try to box this thing in so these linebackers can, can feel and make a play. So right now, he's just bracing himself for that. He's not attacking 50. He's just setting himself up to, to take the lick. And though he didn't go back, if they wanted to run that ball, if they wanted to run this ball, look at the lane they got. If they wanted to run it. They RPO'd it. If they wanted to run, look at the lane they got because he, instead of just closing this gap and making this puller hit him right here, he just braced himself for it. All right, so in the last play, we mentioned about attacking the pullers. So this is our guy right here, 55. Now watch how he attacks the puller on this play. Even though it's a touchdown for a UGA, just watch the difference in his actions because when he took that lick the first play, he only played one more play that drive, and then he didn't start this drive out. This is the second drive. Now let's watch how he attacks the puller in this one and see the difference. I'm going to snap the ball. All right. See him coming down the line? Now, you see the pullers coming now. Now he's closing the gap and taking it to him. He's taking it to him. And look at, this, look, look at the difference. Look at the difference. Now there's really, there's really no space here. Luckily, this guy logs it, and they going outside. And only they were going outside regardless. Had he tried to box that in, they were going outside because this dude, number six, is going to pass it to number five. But he did a good job of not just waiting and taking a lick and delivering the blow. He did a good job of delivering the blow that time. Now, that, that shows that it was some kind of coaching going on because he adjusted to the pullers. Well, this is the very next time he saw a puller. Let's see what happened. Same dude on 54 coming, and now he just stands there to box it. He don't take, he don't really take it to him. Like, he just accepting a blow. And it's really even no big blow by 54 either. They just kind of, okay, we're going to meet right here and um, not do too much of nothing. But he keeps he keeps outside contained. But he ain't attack that, like, because he don't know there's not a run. He has no clue there's not a run. So if this is a run, look at all this, all this grass he got. Because he didn't close the gap down. They down, they, they down, they washed this dude down. He pulled and kicked out. And look at this alley cook. No, that ain't cook. I don't know what I don't know who them four is. But if, if he was running the ball. If he was running it. And they just RPO on this guy, really. Because he's gonna throw it to big zero. Now, I don't know if he's shying away from contact or what. But generally, when you, you know, defensive ends or edge guys, or whatever, they got tight ends, they supposed to beat these guys up. He 55 is supposed to beat up 86. Supposed to. Now, 86 gets the leverage on him already because he's, you know, waiting. And, you know, he, he does a good job of playing inside zone. He keeps his shoulder square, and he does not fall in and try to make that tackle unless the he know the quarterback pulls it off. 
So he's kind of getting kind of a slow start by, you know, playing his technique. So that, that, that allows 86 to get good leverage on him. Now when he realizes 86 is blocking him, he just needs to destroy him, and he don't. He, he does play with his hands, though. Look at his hands make contact first. He does play with his hands. Press him out, which is good right there. And controls his gap. Nothing wrong with that technique. And initially it looked bad to me until I slowed it down. Initially it looked bad to me until I slowed it down, but right, he got that man off his feet. He got good press right there. He's still controlling his gap because his gap is out here. Nothing's coming that way. So he he's good right here. He got the rest of his teammates got to handle all this. He got this gap. You know the mantra, do your job. He doing his job. Well coached young man. All right, now see, let's see if we see a different pass rush move. Here's our guy here. Now, in the first film, we saw a um, kind of like a, a Euro step outside, go inside. We saw the jump. He tried to jump chop with the uh, rip on the second hand. And, you know, he kind of put them two moves in rotation. So let's see what he does now. This is a pass rush. First of all, it looked like he allowed the tackle to get off on him. He knew the tackle knows the snap count. Tackle does know the snap count. Tackle's in his second kick before he even took a step. Now you can try to bull rush this dude. Oh, okay. Now, nah. starts off like a bull rush. Right there, it looks like a bull rush. Got him off balance. Tried to club him by. And if, if he were stronger, this probably would work. The only reason I think 69 stayed in this, because 69 is as strong as a as an ox. That little club move right there, if he's stronger, that works. Because he got him off balance. He got him off balance and he dis disengaged. Just gotta go to the quarterback now. Just gotta get to the quarterback. 69 recovers enough to push him by. That's not a bad rep. That's not a bad rep by 55. Alright, on this play right here. We got David right here. And it's a pass play. He's going to get chipped, but let's look at it and see if we think he was he would win this rep if the chip didn't come from the running back. So let's see. Still no contact. Don't really have the edge because the, the tackle's there. I was in good position with his hand in his chest on the side. And I don't think he wins that rip. The chip definitely helps, though. But I don't think he just has a, a clear path to the to the QB because he didn't beat him with speed. The, the tackle's in good position. Didn't try a secondary move once he saw the chip coming. And don't look like he really even saw the chip coming. Because at this point, about right here, if you see that, that's been a good spin inside. A good spin inside. But then if you go inside, you give up contain too. So, I guess he got to stay outside because that's his uh, responsibility. And hopefully that get pushed up the middle. But again, nothing real, you know, explosive with the pass rush, pass rush moves. Again, versus lesser competition, he, he did his thing. But right here. Against guys that you'll probably be seeing every Sunday, even on the Jaguars. Uh, not too hot right here. Now, on this play right here, I really, he didn't win his rep because a penalty got caught on 69. But I really like his violent hands and the way he just kept trying to get off, kept trying to get off. Didn't just stay blocked. The in and out move didn't work. 69 is in good position. Punches him in his chest. Now, my first move don't work. Got to come with something else. Even though he got his face mask, look at what his hand, look at his hand placement. David's hand is in great position to to move that that left hand and then maybe rip through. Only reason he doesn't because that that 69's hand is in his face mask. But if he takes that that wrist that he has now and just shoves it down and then rips with that left hand, which is what he's trying to do, but he got his face mask, he wins. And even if he just go ahead and finish the play and don't worry about the flag. 
he would have had a straight shot at the QB, at least rushing the QB. But he, he kind of, I ain't going to say he quit on the play, but he started looking, you know, for the flag. If he just finished the play, even though he got the flag, he still have a better chance of maybe disrupting the QB. Did he catch that? Yeah, he did catch that. Damn. And this is by far his best pass rush move in the, in the four games I've watched. I've only talked about two on camera. But this is by far his best pass rush move of, of any of the four games I've watched. We're going to see it from the wide angle and we're going to see it from the, the rear, the backside. He steps inside. The tackle steps inside. And he pivots right off that arm. I mean, not pivot, spins right off that arm, right off the elbow. And now he just turned his speed on. Which, you know, is to me, his greatest attribute is his speed, his relentlessness. He can work on the the technique. He can work on strength, maybe. But he's an extremely versatile athlete out there. I'm not sure about his hips as far as dropping the coverage. But he has the, the framework to be a darn good football player. A darn, he has the framework to be a darn good football player. He has the base, the baseline to be a darn good football player. And with flashes like this, if he can do this consistently, and just put a bunch of players step inside. Look how he got Slayer all off balance. Got him off balance. Now 69 finna overcompensate. And he gonna spin right off of him. 69 overcompensate now. Boom, right off of him. Now there he is, number two that a chip. Number two's at a chip. Oh, number two's in the flex. Now you got a straight line to the quarterback. Straight line to the quarterback. Now let's go back and see it in live action. Cause this slow mo it. You can break it down in slow mo, but it don't do it justice to how smooth it was, how fluid it was. Watch how fluid it is, and this is gonna be the last clip for, for David, old Jabo. This is gonna be the last clip for him. Watch how fluid this is. No wasted motion. No wasted motion at all. Zero wasted motion in this move. In out, reverse. I run run the quarterback down. Now what I will say is, and this is kind of wrap it all up, to me his best attribute is his speed, his athleticism. I'm um, not sure of his hips as far as dropping in coverage. Um, pass rush moves, he need more in the toolbox. Definitely need more like that last play we just saw. Um, this game he didn't play. As many reps as he played in the previous game I showed you. Why? I don't know. I don't know if they felt like they had a better, they needed more rotation because they were playing better guys or what. But um, when he played the Big Ten competition, he dominated. And I feel like he should dominate because if you see 97 on your screen, he the one got all the, the coverage and the, the hype and all that stuff. So he should have dominated the Big Ten competition, which he did. And, um, you know, he played guys versus Georgia, which will probably be playing on Sunday. And so I think he's a, a okay prospect. I think he would be a, uh, a round two guy, um, maybe late round one, but you know, not a not a down the line day three guy. Um, right now he fits number one on my big board because he's the only guy that I've done so far. But um, you know, off the top of my head, I could throw some other guys out there that would probably be higher than him. But right now he sits number one because he's the first one I've done. Um, again, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. This is part two. But David Ojobu, uh, age guy from Michigan. Oh, I forgot to say, as far as his NFL position, I think he's a 3-4 outside linebacker. That's what, I don't think he's a 4-3 defensive end or a 4-3 outside linebacker that kind of plays off the line. I think he's a 3-4 outside linebacker. And, and in the games I watched, I never saw him put his hand in the ground. Never. So that's my synopsis of uh, 55, David Ojobu from um Michigan, and if I mispronounce his name, charge it to my head, not my heart. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Check out part one also uh, if you have not seen it. And it's Coach Evans with Set the Tyler Films, and I'm out.